Hey, we live, baby. Welcome to the Humble Brag, the podcast. Yes, sir. Hey, man. Glad to be here. It's been a long time coming. A, long time. a lot of planning. A, a lot, lot of talking. planning, a lot of getting together. You know, I'm just happy to be here. For sure. Yeah. So, so we here. Like, what, what what is this? Like, you know, what is the humble brag? Man, I think the humble brag is about us knowing where we come from. Yeah. I um, mean, appreciating how successful we've been, not gloating about it, but you know, just you know, letting people know like it's okay to to big yourself up, um, but also have a group of guys that you can come together with. Facts, facts. And it's all love, man. Listen, everything we talking about here is love, y'all. Y'all gonna see a lot in this channel. I mean, you're gonna yeah, see facts. us probably getting some arguments, some disagreements, <laughs> some agreements. But hey, that's what we we boys. We do that all the time, every day, all day. So yeah. love it, man. We we've been at it for a while, fellas. Hey, so when do we, we start? Twenty twelve. Yeah, twenty twelve. Twenty twelve, man. Wow. So so by the way, just so y'all know. We all UNC Chapel Hill graduates. Shout out to them Hills. Yes, sir. Let's go. Let's go. So that's kind of where we all linked up. That's where we got it connected. And shoot, we've been talking about this for a minute. That's why I'm happy we all yeah, kind of get finally. it going. It's going to be nice. Finally. Oh, yeah, for sure. I think it's a lot of good content going to come from this. Uh, just happy to be together with the fellas. Finally got everything coordinated. My boy Jerm came through with all the with all the equipment, so hey, man, we man. official. We are so official. We official. 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 So you may see some wine and everything, some wine glasses here in front of us. So really, to kind of give a breakdown of what we want to do, every we want to bring our culture to y'all, right? So some of the things that we do is we always get together. We have some wine, some whiskey, tequila, whatever it really is. We like to just sit back, have a little drink, and just talk, man. Like we talk about a lot of different things. So. And every episode that you see, we're always gonna have something here. And we ain't going crazy. We ain't trying to get lit and everything like that. Some people may, <laughs> Germ. Uh, but lightweight, yeah. lightweight, lightweight. But the whole that. the whole point of it is, like, we're gonna be talking about the different wines that we get from. Man, we're gonna go from ten dollar wines, maybe up to fifty, maybe to a hundred. You know, we may have a different cup, different different type of bottles in here. A hundred. <laughs> different type of bottles in here. That's it. Hey, different levels. You know what I'm saying? Not but, <laughs> but that's the beautiful thing about it. And then from there, man, we just gonna talk about our life, man. We're gonna talk about what's going on. We're gonna have different people coming in talking about what they got going on. Put that on, oh, shut up. <laughs> you yeah. know, we'll do all that. Yeah, see, yeah we really wanna use this as a platform. Like yeah. not just us, you know, we're gonna talk about our life, but people with businesses, entrepreneurs, sure, you know, in our community that we know that's doing amazing things, like we wanna put them on. Um, and let our audience know about them. So, so yeah, we, you know, what, what we drinking on tonight, fellas? Uh, this this is Bonanza. Uh, it's a cab, pretty good wine. Uh, <clears throat> Cost about twenty two dollars a bottle. Um, it started from the Camus family out in uh, Cali. Uh, that boy did his homework. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, homework. I did. I did. Nineteen seventy two. I actually had this wine uh, when I was living back in Georgia in Gainesville. I ain't gonna lie, you put us on this. I feel like I Thanks. did. I did. Yeah. So, like I was saying, I had this wine <laughs> when I was living in Gainesville, and one of the guys I did some uh, work with. This was his go to. So ever since I tried, I had to put the fellas on, and ever since we've been we've been vibing out with it. Yes, sir. So before you got to Gainesville, do you feel like uh, you were a wine drinker? Or nah, no, man. Never. What what triggered it? Uh, just hanging out with different people, man. Different status, different money, you know, and just being in that different environment. I was like, you know, let me stem out, try something different versus the Tito's and soda. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Crown and ginger ale. I don't even drink Crown no more. Yeah. I done graduated to Woofer. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> Great, 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 great job. job. Great, great, great job. job. Great, great job. job. Great job. Great, great job. job. Hey, hey. I will say this. Uh, you made a good point, though. You said yeah. the people that you hung around, you got around money, right? I think there's a perception that when you drink wine, uh, there's wealth mm -hmm. uh, involved. And, you know, what? how do y'all feel about that? Is that a true, you know, true notion? I think that traditionally it's been like that. But for us, I think we see a different side to it to where you can find wines at different price points um, that aren't always expensive that people can get introduced to. So, you know, I think that, I think that it's important, it's important that we, that we, uh, Hold on. Uh, you know, Jeff, Jeff Corn, 
nigga pouring his tail. Hey, over here sweat. Hey, nah, it ain't even that. It ain't even that. It ain't that. It ain't that. I the know whole what, house shook just I know, now. I know what you're about to say. I know what you're about to say. <laughs> he said, it ain't even like that, bro. Man. Y'all stop worrying about my pouring. Y'all just talk, man. Don't worry about me. And that's another thing. Y'all gonna get a lot of comedy out of this also. A you know what? Comedy. I think we missed something that very uh, unique to wine pouring, right? Normally, me growing up, if I saw anybody drinking wine, they would go from bottle to glass. Jeff, what, what were you using? What is that? So, man, this is a decanter, man. So, with this right here, we, we aerate the wine. We, mm -hmm. get it, we get it good, ready to drink. All that flavor is going to come through. Mm -hmm. So, you need something like this. I mean, you don't need it. You can actually just pop the bottle and just leave it open for a little bit, maybe 20, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. This just makes that process faster. Okay. So... You know, we ain't got we ain't gonna be sitting for 20, 30 minutes just staring at the bottle, waiting for it to be ready. So, <laughs> so I don't want yeah. do that right so away. So how much does one of the, a good one of these cost? I mean it ranges, you can probably get it from like 100, 200, somewhere in there. Okay. But they got some from all ranges, man, 50, 20 dollars, like whatever you're trying to get. But you know, I think you gotta take your time getting into wine. Like when I think I know when I at least for myself, when I first got into it, it was white wine only. Mm -hmm. Like I couldn't drink any red cause of just because of the taste. Mm -hmm. Now though, I can go really dry on the white wine and the red wines. So I like to switch it up based on the time of year, everything like that. Okay. So, so time of the year, good, good point. So we're going into the fall. Um, you know, what wine would you suggest? Is it a red wine, you know, season or what? I mean, I still think we're in the mix, man. It depends. So like at night, yeah, we like we are right. You know, we're chilling at nighttime. I'm gonna, I'm gonna want something red, but if it's a hot summer day. I'm just trying to chill. I don't want to be too heavy. Can't be too heavy. Yeah. Speaking of heavy. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. Hey, can't 250 be, Oh, pounds. stop it. Don't be lying, bro. 250. 250. Well, oh, whatever. No, we're gonna 120. Be, we're gonna <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyways. anyway. So yeah, so, so, so it depends. Like if it's the lighter the day, lighter the wine, right? So you know, white wine. If we trying to chill, maybe have a cigar or something with it. I like that. Know, we'll go right. Hey. Hey, can I publish this put lighter the day, lighter the wine? Let's put that right here on the screen. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, so yeah, white, uh, yeah, white wine is gonna be more refreshing, you know. Uh, well, for the most part, it's gonna be more refreshing during the summertime, um, daytime type of vibe. Red wine is gonna give you a, a different, you're moving too a fast, so. a different uh, type of vibe. And man, Kedrick already. You know, taking a little sip, so we gotta. Kedrick know what's in the bottle, see, so. Say so he happy. So, I mean, I wanna smell so it I, first, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, how we wanna start it off is a smell test, fellas. Like, let's, let's, let's see what we, what we smelling. What'd you smell? <laughs> it's funny you say that. <laughs> what am I looking for? Like, what am I, what should I exactly. smell? Exactly. Yeah. All right, look. I smell wine. Hit the thing, you get a little twirl, just a little bit. Just a little bit. It all right, opened so up all, some more. all of our first time wine drinkers. Get yeah. you a little twirl. You a little know what twirl. I mean? you know Watch it go around the glass. All right, so see, I smell like some little blackberries, a little cherry, just a little bit. Y'all can spice. Y'all can tell who the uh, occasional wine drinkers in the group, because <laughs> I smell wine. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's love. It's love. It smell like uh, the communion. <laughs> That's too soon. Well, that's well, that's well just great. Too juice, soon. Man. I have to all right, let's taste it, man. Hey, but always cheers up, man. Hey, love y'all boys. Oh yeah, on show, man. <laughs> he just hit it with the shot, didn't he? Like you gotta take a shot. That's good. That's some dumb stuff. Mm. Yeah. What's the rating on this one, man? I think it's like a four oh. If I say four point one out of five for me. Ooh, let's rating. break that down. What's the skill? Let's break that down. So check it out the Vivino app. If you haven't gotten it yet, download that on your phone. V I V I N O. I said that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so check out the so, Vivino app. It's good to be able to rate wines. You can go to your local stores, Total Wine, Target, wherever you buy your wine from, scan your wine. I mean, it can give you a scale of what that wine rates. From and honestly, that is not sponsored. We just talking because we love that. Yeah. So yeah. Shout, shout out, 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 shout out to the Vino. We're going to give y'all some love. This is good stuff. But Much love. So, I mean, all right, cool. So, tastes good. So, what are we getting in today, fellas? Like, what's the, what's the conversation? Where are we headed? Mm. Mm, that's a great question. <laughs> how did this how did this bond start? Right? Mm, um, that's a good one. For me, you know, I ended up going to UNC as you prefaced at the beginning. 
Uh, but it was really a last minute decision for me. Mm -hmm. right, obviously, we all played sports, you know, in high school. But, um, you know, let's talk about what brought us together and what kept us together. Yeah. So, Kedrick, tell us a little bit about you. All right. So, uh, I'm Kedrick Davis. Uh, I'm from the Charlotte area. Um, I play football at Barry Academy in Charlotte. Um, I met these guys in 2012. We stepped on campus the first day together. <laughs> And we grind it, grind, grind, grind every single day for, for six years, six years. And ever since then, we always held each other accountable. You know? Hey, I wasn't in school for six I years. I wasn't in school for six years. <laughs> I, 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 hey, hey, so, so, I, so I did go to grad school. before us. So. <laughs> so I did go to grad school and I had an extra year. Oh, okay. I, okay. Did, okay. I had an extra year of eligibility, yeah. you know, yeah. so I, I took advantage of that. Uh, mm -hmm. Went to UNC Charlotte, played my last year. And these guys jumped into the workforce a year earlier than I did. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, so I, I'm Jeff Battle. Hey, I'm young TML, man. So y'all gonna y'all gonna know me. I like to talk my money. I get on these guys' nerves all the time. But hey, TML stands for time to make millions. Y'all gonna hear that a lot. That's my catchphrase. So uh, but anyway, a little bit about myself, like look, met them on the same day. We were all moving in together to the dorm rooms. Hey, Granville. Granville, it was love, it was love from there, yeah. man, for real. Like, literally, we all started hanging out, playing ball, basketball, like anything we can possibly do, just kicking it with the boys, man. So, I was not hooping. He can't hoop. He can't hoop. <laughs> I but, was not hooping. But that's the, whole, that's the whole part about it, right? Like, it, it became a friendship immediately. We partied together, we fought together sometimes. <laughs> anyway, we had a good time, man. We, we loved it. It was all love. Much love, much love. The, so. the black sheep of the group. Hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm the black sheep. I'm the lone wolf. <laughs> I'm uh, Jeremy McKellar, a.k.a. Jerm Hustle. I'm uh, from Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, I tapped in with these guys. Actually, we all went to Carolina at the same time. Um, yeah. Same years, essentially. Um, Charles and I actually were in a freshman year Spanish class together. He forgot about that. Didn't even know this dude <laughs> <laughs> until a year ago. <laughs> Yeah, so I was just one. hustle my guy. Yeah, so we, we was able to, um, you know, that's what we crossed paths when we was at Carolina. And then from there, um, my sophomore year, I was actually a football manager uh, working with the running backs, Dog Pound, uh, you know. Rule Boys. boys. Year, Rule so, Boys. So, yeah, that's how I was able to come, you know. come uh, connected with the group a little bit more. Um, and then just, you know, we all went through college and then we really – just got re reconnected after yes, after college, yeah. and so um, I think that's where our relationship is really taking it you know to the next level, where we we challenging one another, and that's why I love being around the fellas, um, you know, because we got our height set on bigger things. So, yeah. so yeah, yeah, perfect. Thank you, Hustle. Yeah, CB Charles Brunson, man, from Winston Salem, North Carolina, three three six. That's what me and Hustle got in common. Uh, <laughs> I, unlike these guys, I wasn't a, a scholarship athlete coming out of high school. I was a Prefer walk on, right? And I think one thing we all have in common is we all are very bright, very smart individuals, uh, you know, and that, that's helped propel us after school when, when sports ends, right? At some point, uh, your athletic ability only takes you so far. And then uh, that's when it comes to, you know, per perseverance and resilience, right? And then uh, just the, the intelligence that God has blessed us with. But uh, at Carolina, man, like they said, Graham, we saw some real dark days. <laughs> we saw some, a lot of fun days. But uh, you know, I, I'll talk. I'll tell you the story real quick. Jeff talked about basketball. Oh, <laughs> First time we got on the court, uh, he had to say we bet five dollars. <laughs> oh. Anybody that's from Winston Salem watching this right now, you know I won. <laughs> Anybody from Lenore, you know he paid me in quarters. Talk that talk. You know, but and, and, and that right there, it, it became a habit. You know, for year after year. Constantly beating them on the court. Right? <laughs> Stop! <laughs> but not no like Jaren mentioned. Though I think what brought us, what kept us together, was just our grind and our our, uh, our focus and determination to be successful. Right, in every one of our courses of, of life, we've all uh, persevered and, and stayed uh, dedicated to bettering ourselves and bettering each other. But I was I will say something about that though. Like I feel like during COVID, that's when it really took off. Yeah. Cause yeah. so what they kind of left out is. All of us, well, Kedra was in Atlanta, but we still, he was still, we all communicate every day. Yeah. But pretty much, we all stayed in not even like a five minute yeah. commute of each other. We were like right down the street. Right and so we didn't even know Jeremy was living in the, 
Jeremy and Charles live in the same apartment, apartment complex, complex. Yep. and we didn't even know until I guess y'all bumped into each other. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Yep. Yep. I was driving in the Honda CRV. You know, <laughs> Fact. I pulled up on India and Charles. It blew my mind because I'd never seen a brother <laughs> driving a Honda CRV. So I was gonna check on him, make sure he was all right. Come to find out, it was my boy Jerm Hustle. You feel me? And truthfully, I was taking something to the trash. It was just basketball skills. <laughs> so okay. Hey, and I wanna I wanna say one thing about just kind of cap up with y'all. Talked about our friendship. We all had individual friendships amongst each other that yeah. kind of brought us all together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in college, me and Jeff, we had our, you know what I'm saying, individual friendship, yeah. me and Charles. Mm -hmm. When we didn't travel, we used to get together on Fridays, play the PS3, ride up to Raleigh, go party at Long Branch, well, who didn't and come travel? back. <laughs> <laughs> By what? I said, well, who didn't travel? I said, Charles. Oh. <laughs> I always travel. <laughs> yeah, he no, always he no, he didn't. No, he didn't. Hey. But yeah, so that, that's yeah. and that's I sold the, I sold the tickets at Caroline. You, know I mean? you I, also I, sold your Honda CRV. <laughs> <laughs> and you how also much, sold. How much you got for it? How much you got for it? I got, I got a good. Yeah. Look. <laughs> I made profit. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Hondas do hold a value though. Hondas do in hold the a pandemic. Value. Shout now out. I know I'm changing gears a little bit, but I know you said something earlier, and I was want to touch on that. Like you said, like after school, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like after school, we all went to the workforce and did our own thing, like. What was that process like, man? Because I know that's kind of crazy. It's like, so I know there's a lot of football players or athletes in general currently right now who are kind of going through that. And I want your take too, as a non-athlete, kind of your <laughs> transition. Non-D1 athlete. All right, non-D1 athlete. Hey, my okay. boy plays soccer now. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Trying. My yeah. boy was and nice on that. Okay, and best. Nice yeah, yeah, yeah. Right <laughs> when it comes nah, nah, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. So all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is like. What was that process like? Like that transition? How'd you jump into it? Cause I know it's hard for a lot of people to make that transition. I mean, yeah. even athlete or non-athlete, like whatever it may be, True. that's a hard transition to make from yeah. chilling, playing Call of Duty all day, partying, to then going out and actually trying to fend for yourself in this real world. So like, how'd that work for you? Oh man, for me, I feel like the way I always characterize a college is it's the four short years that we figure out about what living life is really about. But a lot of times we just be BSing in college. You know, yeah. Some people um, may not be as focused or seeing long-term. Um, and so for me, I was always trying to think about long-term, but I always knew I wanted to be in the IT and the tech field. Um, and so, but how'd you find that out though? Well, that's, that's curious you say that. How'd you find out that you wanted to be in the IT tech field? Like just jump? Growing up, growing up, I always have been the tech guy, um, the computer guy around the family. And so whenever I got to whenever I got to Carolina, I initially was majoring in computer science. Okay. And then from there, I figured out I don't really want to do computer science, so I switched over to business. Um, and then from there, I figured out I want I want to do a mixture of computer science and business. And so that's where I landed in the information science space. So if you mm -hmm. don't, you know, for younger people out there that's trying to figure out their way um, in the IT or the tech space, you got computer science, you can even do business, and then also information science is a good route to take um, for just understanding databases and systems. But we won't get too in depth on that. But um, that boy's about to jump in there. He's yeah. 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 Hey, he just used yeah, he six was, words. He, he, was, ready he was ready for that. Ready for that. Database <laughs> system tech information. Yeah. Hey, I don't know none of them words. Yeah, for all real. That. All of that. You can tell Jern set up the Wi Fi history. Yeah, he's for real. He all set up. What about you, CB? Hey, good point. I think Jerm hit on it. It's just a lot of transitions throughout college, right? Like I went in as a uh, bio major, pre-med, and uh, <laughs> the distraction is a freshman year. So again, there, for the kids out there, uh, you might not have it figured out, right? But uh, you got to have a goal in mind. And my goal was always to be, um, you know, more so in the business, uh, or at least to be an entrepreneur, because my parents were always uh, business owners. So that's kind of what drove me to make a decision to switch from biology to economics. Uh, so I, I ended up majoring in economics, a double major actually, economics and communications. And um, I think being a, a walk-on, eventually earning a scholarship to play football, I kind of knew that maybe football wouldn't be, you know, the uh, writing the, the million dollar check, right? Uh, though I still dedicated myself from an athletic standpoint to be successful on the football team, I knew that I was gonna have to do something else and uh, kind of transition to be uh, in my professional career elsewhere. And uh, with that, <clears throat> I did a, uh, an internship. Mm. I did an internship, went to a uh, career fair, and this guy was standing there in front of a train, 
And uh, he was like, hey, you can come work for the railroad. <laughs> and I was like, man, I'm not hitting those spikes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but then he said, hey, we're going to be paying $3,000 a month plus a stipend, you know, and so many other cool That's incentives. Like and mm -hmm. from my internship during the summer so i'm getting bread uh you know junior my the summer between uh junior and senior year and uh that ended up leading that internship ended up leading to a full-time career uh and then from there it propelled me on in the uh, transportation industry and probably one of the best decisions i made for real what about you Keith? uh so like i mentioned earlier uh, my path was a little different from these guys um, I was on a full ride scholarship, so football was always kind of that main focus. Uh, even through high school, I was uh, driven academically also, but football was still like, I got to make it to the league. I got to do this. I got to do that. So when I got to college, being that I was kind of sheltered, uh, didn't get to go out during high school or do anything. I kind of like took my first year to kind of adjust to being on my own and mm -hmm. not having my mom breathing down my neck. So I kind of got off track a little bit, not academic wise, mom. but just partying and just not taking football as serious as I needed to, which is something I wish I could have done, but you live and you learn. Um, so after, after I graduated from Carolina in uh, 16, I actually went to grad school at UNC Charlotte. Um, Jeff in my ear, that was one of the best decisions I made, uh, getting to <laughs> play another year and, and really focusing, focusing on football just to see if I had the ability and the talent to make it to the next level. So I performed really well at Pro Day at Carolina and UNC Charlotte. Uh, Jeff was my, my pre-agent at the time. So <laughs> I got a call. So I got a call from Detroit, got invited to a rookie mini camp. So I went there. Uh, that didn't work out. So I was kind of defeated by that because I had put a lot of time and effort. was working two jobs, paying for my own training. Mm. So I just kind of got a little disappointed with that, a little discouraged from that. So at that point... I was like, you know what, football not the only egg in my basket. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get out here, I'm gonna grind, I'm gonna take care of myself. And that's what I've been doing. And luckily, my career successes came from networking, meeting sure. different people, and mm -hmm. just being put in blessed situations to where I can, people care about me succeeding. Uh, and I've uh, thrived off that mm -hmm. here in Charlotte. I'm glad to be back and just traveling the world as I can. Yeah, so I, I, think, I think he said something like, I saw the grind, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I was the pre-agent. I didn't actually. I didn't do agent, but I was connecting though. I was. I'm a connector, man. I, I like. I love the network. So he, he definitely put the work in. But I'll say for myself. Um, once again, I try to be Mr. T M M. Y'all know that from the beginning. From the from beginning. The beginning. So when we say this, like from the beginning, my mindset has always been figure out how to get to it. You know what I mean? I don't care what it is or how to do it. I didn't really have a. I had a. I knew where I wanted to go, but I had no plan on how to get there. So. Which is cool because you can just grow. You can just grow as much as mm -hmm. you can. So, for myself, I would say the biggest thing for me is just I, I had to be in the moment, right? Mm -hmm. So they, they, they're a test to it. I used to come into the I used to come into the team meetings with a full suit on. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> Hey, sweating. And it's <laughs> sweating, hot. But it is kind of crazy when I look back on those moments. It's like, all right, like my mindset was primed to go there, right? And so like. Like now, the life side that we that we all live, we are exactly where we want to be, which is so dope. So, you know, I would I would say the same thing. Like going into going from college to the real world, um, honestly, because I was already trying to live that life in college, it wasn't too much of a change for me. Mm -hmm. Like it felt like it was supposed to be now. And and even my first job, I didn't I didn't have to pay rent or anything like that because of my um, my job paid for it. But Following that, that kind of helped me build, right? And then, mm -hmm. you know, I had to continue doing other things as well outside of that. And now I am where I am today. I was in finance for a little bit, jumped out of finance. Now I'm in tech. Um, shout out to Jeremy. Mm -hmm. And so, right. so now I'm in tech and kind of took a detour. But it's good because every every I tell these guys all the time, every path that I kind of taken so far gives me a breakdown of exactly what I needed to learn. So like now I know everything about like estate planning and mm -hmm. and just financial tips in general and all the rest of this stuff. And I got to work with a lot of people and talk to a lot of people about finances. And so I got to see it from all different levels. So it's cool. I think you made a good point. And that really for all of us is talking to people. Yeah. Like people uh so maybe we can segue into networking. Like what what is networking and how valuable is that in terms of like where we are today in our lives. I mean, I, I know I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for, you know, the people who came before me and the people I had good relationships with. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, networking is very important. Yeah, I think that networking is a very critical, it's a skill too. 
Yeah, like, facts. A lot of times growing up, we may be independent and we just think we got to do things on our own. Um, but the power of just knowing somebody that's in a position that you want to be in or they may know someone that's in a position that you're looking for, um, like that's invaluable. You can't teach that. Like college, I think that's one of the reasons why we do go to college and then why you may go to a, a, a higher, more esteemed college is because you want to be around the networks of people. Somebody's dad may work at some company you're trying to work at or somebody's yep. aunt may be somewhere or, um, you know, the possi you know, possibilities are endless with, you know, a good sound <coughs> network. And so, you know, that's very big. I want to say, so in, in terms of networking, the one phrase that always stuck with me, shout out to Dr. Debbie Stroman. Dr. Stroman. Love Stroman. Um, we used to have so many conversations, but the one thing she always said that stuck with me is it's not who you know. Is who knows you on a favorable basis. Mm -hmm. wow. I mean, that's the biggest, bro. Yeah. And I didn't under back then. I didn't understand it, like, cause she kept saying, it. "I'm like, why she keep saying it? It's weird." Say it one more time. It ain't who you know. It's who you who knows you on a favorable basis. Wow. Favorable and it's basis. on a favorable basis. So what that means is like, if if I'm if somebody if somebody if I if somebody's asking me to help them get a job, and I'm talking to somebody who's in a position to hire. Mm -hmm. Well, I need to think about that person in the moment to be able to bring them up. But the only way I can do that. Is if I know exactly who that person is, what they're trying to do, the qualifications, yeah. skills, all that, mm -hmm. and that's hard to do, man. Like that's a hard thing to be on top of, to be in the forefront of somebody's mind. Mm -hmm. And those who learn to do that and mm -hmm. have success with that are super successful, man. And that's and when Major I study keys. other and when I study other people and I just watch them, I'm like, man, they they, they know how to do it. And especially yeah. like, you just see people like you wouldn't even, you don't even see how they're doing it, but it's just they know how to point out the right key facts about themselves. Mm -hmm. So. Networking, bro. That's the. I think that's like the biggest thing. That's and you said it earlier yeah. too. Like you yeah. network your way. You like know? I say, the path was different. So networking was definitely number one on how I got where I am today. Just knowing different people, and it's also about your ability to talk, hold a conversation. Are you credible? Can people listen to you and say, okay, this, this is a good guy. Like I, I'll, I'll be in the airport, just randomly have a conversation with people. Next thing no, we're talking for 10 minutes, and that's just the ability to talk to people. And that, that'll take you a long way. You know, yeah. I think a, a big thing is, because uh, you said being able to say facts about yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bragging is something that people uh, have, a, they ha have a hard time, you know, mm -hmm. being on one side or the other, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Humble brag, right? Mm -hmm. It's a perfect, it's a perfect uh, entry way to, you know, how do you explain who you are all right, explain what your, you know, positive traits or attributes mm -hmm. are in a way that, you know, basically advertises yeah, you, you your brand, yourself, right? Yeah, your brand, you your marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, but you also don't want to come off too cocky. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. So, you know, do y'all have any experiences with that? Yeah. Oh, yeah for sure. So, like, I think you just, man, that was, that was tough. Because here's the thing. You don't want to make it about you. Like, and that's what we always learn, especially yeah. playing football. Yeah. Like, it ain't about mm -hmm. you. It's about the team, right? Yeah. So especially even if you're in a role, like you're in, you're doing your job and you're doing whatever you're supposed to do, or you're just meeting people in general because you're trying to build something, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Like the biggest thing is, okay, how do you distinguish between being cocky and letting them know who you are, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and I would say for myself, what I had to learn is sometimes you gotta you gotta remind you gotta either remind people or you gotta enlighten people. Yeah. To like what you've accomplished mm -hmm. so far, but it's the humble brag, right? Yeah, that's the, the that's the thing about it. It's like mm -hmm. you gotta yeah. you gotta do it in a humble way, meaning like I'm just telling you this so you understand how I can maybe help you grow, yeah, and how I can add value to whatever you're doing, right? Because that's the biggest mm -hmm. thing. Is like when I connect with people, it ain't about me, like, mm -hmm. and that's that's what's helped me get just continue to have the ultimate yeah. successes. It's not about me. It's about okay, if I'm helping this individual, or if I'm or if we're meeting this individual trying to build something. How can I give as much value to them? Because it's gonna come back yeah. tenfold. Yeah, that's yeah, a funny, so, funny oh, thing. Yeah. Funny thing you say that. Uh, in 2015, I met a guy by the name of uh, Frank Harney, and he's a successful Chick Fil A operator. Mm, has two Frank. stand has two standalone Chick Fil A's in the Atlanta area, and I was talking to him at a uh, cancer retreat, and he asked me a question. He said, "Kedra, do you know how many people apply?" to uh, own their own Chick-fil-A each year. I was like, I threw out a number, I don't remember what number. He was like, about 22,000. And he said, do you know how many people get chosen? I said, I have no idea. 
he said between 19 and 34. It's cause they, that's why they sound just yeah. so Yeah, so he said between 19, <laughs> between 19 and 34. So the next question that popped in my head, Frank, what set you apart? And he said, Kedra, I literally told him that my biggest mission in life is to see other people grow through opportunities that I have. So that's why I had to tell that story uh, based off what Jeff said. And ever oh, since right. then, that's just been how, that's just been kind of how I think. And uh, moving through life, I try to help people as much as I can at work, anywhere. So that's a, that's a good point. Yeah. So I think that's the ultimate key then. Yeah. Adding value, man, and, and wanting to see other people grow. Like if if that's your main like objective, then it's gonna come to you. The level of excellence yeah. you're gonna have, like it's it's got to be great to be able to help somebody else. Mm -hmm. So if you keep that at the forefront of your mind, like you know, go a long way. Go a very for long sure. Way. For sure. I will say, uh, it, it hasn't all been peaches and cream. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. I, yeah. I think, I, think I, I grew the most uh, in times where I was, Struggling. you know, embarrassed, really. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, it was actually an interview I had for a position, and I ended up getting a position, but the feedback I got from the hiring manager was, you did a terrible job during the interview. Mm -hmm. It was a, a phone call from the hiring manager, and they said, you could have done better. Mm -hmm. and I'm so, assuming you didn't get a job. I got the job. <laughs> I got the they job. They see potential. They right. See potential. But see, the thing is, when I went to the interview, I was yeah. doing exactly what we what we talked about. I came from a team atmosphere, yeah. Yeah. right? And I'm talking about you know how we did these things as a team, and I, I didn't want to put too much highlight on my own you know abilities. Mm -hmm. And the feedback was, hey, you did you could have did better. And I've heard that you were in charge of X, Y, and Z, mm -hmm. right? I heard that you you did Same. these things, and these are some products that, that you that came from uh, from your you know, input. Yeah. And I, when I started to reflect, and I think we might have mentioned earlier, do you know yourself, mm -hmm. right? Do you, do you take notes of your own work, right? And I think a lot of times we just get so caught up in like, you know, just Solve being in the motion yeah. that you don't realize like, man, I did this. Take a note down. Do y'all have a journal? Mm -hmm. I don't have a journal. Nobody. Uh, it's right, we, right here. It's right here. <laughs> hey, it's right here. We don't right have a journal. It's right here. <laughs> Would you oh, suggest yeah. that, I mean, I don't know, you manifest things, you had a board. Yeah. Oh, I got vision boards. Yeah. <laughs> vision boards. Yeah. I got actual like journals is a little bit different. Though. Nah, because I literally have, yeah. that's different for me. Like, journals like me writing out my thoughts, but I have so many thoughts that that's drive me crazy. You know, so I think, but vision boards and like manifesting things, like, yeah, like the house I'm living in today, the cars that I got, the my dog, my wife. Any of that stuff. Not in that order, though. <laughs> Not, in that order. <laughs> Not in that order. I did, I did go backwards. <laughs> come on. But, but honestly, uh, but no, 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 but I said, no. But, <laughs> the dog got me to first. <laughs> no, no. But I, I, you know what? But you know what's crazy? You said the order. The reason the order is because, like, when I was in college, I, was, I wasn't like, oh, I'm about to get married. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, it was more so like, okay, this is where I see myself going. Yeah. But it, it did go reverse, though. They reversed the order. Um, which is dope. I ain't even think about that. I ain't, that's Man, cool. the, the way we transition is so smooth because to build something great, yeah, you got to have a great woman, man. Oh, yeah. You got to have a great woman. Talk I mean, I, at least that's from about, my experience. Talk about a married man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I ain't the only one that's married <laughs> yeah, too. Man. Nah, nah, but you know what? I think that's really dope because like, well, not in our relationship, in the beginning, it was more so, one time when we were just dating, yeah. it was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm grinding the way I'm grinding, you grinding the way you grinding. Wherever you wherever you make it is wherever you make it. Right? Yeah. Now it's more so like, all right, like what do we want? And so I asked her too, like, what do you want? She, I don't know. I'm like, you better figure it out. Cause I know what I want. Mm -hmm. And then my stuff is all I never go for small things, because the small things are small. I can get the small things. Mm -hmm. I want big I want the big things. I want the big ticket items. That's just how I rock, right. you know? Right. Like I want things that seems very unattainable. Like it can be an amount of money I make. I mean, businesses I have, real estate, cars, anything. I try to go astronaut when it drives her crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Cause then she's like, oh my God. But I'm like, watch we hit it though. Or we gonna come close. You know, we, we, we yeah. may fall short. I'm cool with that. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if I wanna, if I wanna, if I'm on McLaren and I gotta settle for an old two. <laughs> oh my God. I'm cool with that. Hey, that, hey, that's, <laughs> hey that's coming next year. Oh it's yeah, coming yeah, yeah, next yeah, for, for sure. sure. Well, I think a, a, <laughs> I think a major part of that though is is all about balance, yeah. right? Um, so if you're looking for somebody, or if you have somebody, a couple things to, to figure is like, hey, what are what are your individual goals? For sure, yeah. right? And then together, can you support each other to achieve that? 
Um, or sure. obviously that's work for y'all. Yeah. Uh, and that, I think any successful relationship, you got two two individuals that come together to to achieve one. And you goal. said it though, like you got to write it out. Like you know, I, I, it's not not necessarily in the journal. Yeah. <laughs> but like in a vision board format or something like that, like you write it out and hold each other accountable, man. Like I think it, even if you got a girlfriend, you're not married or boyfriend or whatever it is, like hold each other accountable. Like literally, <laughs> <laughs> like literally hold each other accountable because right. at the end of the day, at the end of the day, that's the only way right. y'all gonna make it. Like literally, cause, cause if, let's say a wife says she want this and I'm, you know, I'm gonna do my everything I can do to help her get that. And then yeah. it's gonna help me. But same thing, like we talk about that all the yeah. time. Now that's really good stuff though. Like so at the end of the day, y'all got those key facts. So I think looking forward, right? Yeah. yeah. This is what y'all gonna get. It's gonna be raw. Hopefully no okay. hopefully nobody crowds if they do. Yeah, all right then. It it's we're gonna be here to support y'all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It won't be, it'll be light, it'll be it won't yeah, be too serious light, all the time. Light, no. You make sure somebody fall asleep, because germs are lightweight when it comes to drinking anything. <laughs> yeah, no more wine for him. Yeah, he gonna have yeah, he one done. or two he wines done. done. So nah, but moving forward, look, we we plan on posting every single Wednesday. Every single Wednesday, y'all gonna have a post from us. And y'all gonna have some little short videos in between, little comical things. So definitely tune in. And hey, well, tell them we got we got some good stuff coming too. We got yeah. some guests. Some guests. Oh yeah, yeah like bro, we listen. We got a whole list of yeah. guests that we bring on, and they gonna really just give us insight to their world, what they're doing, how they doing it, how how they been successful, if they not successful, whatever. We want to hear it all. So really mm -hmm. tune in because it's gonna be some really good content for for everybody to kind of jump into. And then shoot, like I said, every Wednesday. Like and subscribe. That's the way we're gonna grow. Yeah, we Shout out to Bonanza. Bonanza, hey, we gotta break hey. down the price right there. Hey, man. so listen, Bonanza. I think Keiji said earlier it's like twenty two dollars. Hey, great wine. I think. Great wine. Great wine. Great wine. I will buy this. I drink this again. So, yeah, so look. It. Shout out to Bonanza. Hey, more stuff coming. Y'all let us know in the comments yeah, what y'all want next. Yeah. We we'll pick out any wine. We'll everything. taste it. We'll let you know. Do like, us anything. Do us a quick favor too. Like. Comment, subscribe. Got to. We got a Big lot of thing. content coming. Check us out on Sir. Instagram. Uh, and we're gonna put that. And down. listen, when we hit when we hit a thousand subscribers since we just started, it's a big giveaway. Yes, big giveaway. Big trust. Big trust. Yes, woo, woo, woo. All right. Hey, much love. Hey, we out. Hey. Till next time. Humble brag. Humble yes, brag podcast. Oh.